Hi, do you want to make huge cinematic chords like your favorite Hollywood producer Hans Zimmer and uh, John Williams? Today I'm going to show you how you can take this really tiny, small, uh, regular piano chord progression sounding like this. And make it sound like this. Right, my name is Matthias and if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, let's take the tour! Okay, so begin by booting up your favorite sequencer and for this demo I'm going to use uh, Bitwig Studio. And we need to plot down our chords. And the chords are as follows. A minor, F major, and a D minor to an E major. It's totally fine if you don't play keyboard because you can always uh, program these sequences. So let's uh, enter the piano roll here and begin by fleshing out the chord around C4 in the piano roll. Our first chord is the A minor, A, C and E. Our next chord is the F major. So we just skip every second white note in this case. So F, A and C. And then we have the D minor, D, F, A. And then our final chord is the E major. So E, G sharp and B. And now this is a little bit too fast. So we'll make these uh, chords double in length like this. So making chords epic is really not uh, just about the chords uh, themselves, but it's rather about how you arrange the notes in these chords, because these are really simple chords, it's just uh, triads. So what can we do to make this more cinematic before we move on and move the notes to the strings? So maybe move down these, uh, the bass note here, an octave. So we select all the bass notes and uh, Let's double them and drag them down an octave. So now we basically have this. But we want to thicken this up even more. So let's drag, hold Alt and drag these down another octave. So we have doubled the bass here. So we have the basses, the orchestral basses and the orchestral cellos playing this uh, A2. Or maybe even drag this down another octave so we have even fatter and more spread out notes in our arrangement. The next step here is uh, to make something called the voice leading and that is that we make a more smoother transition between the notes in these chords, between these chords. So if we look here we can see that the C exists uh, both in our A minor and in our F major. So that's totally fine to let that C continue and play in the F chord. And the same thing here with the A, but the F here Maybe we can move that up an octave because it will be closer to the top E here in our first chord. And the same thing with our next chord, the D minor here, the D, F and A. Let's move up the D here an octave. So it's closer to the C and let's move this F up an octave. So it's closer to the previous F in the F chord. And that final chord, let's move the E up an octave. So now we have a much smoother transition between these chords and it will sound much better when it's performed and it's also easier to play by the string players if you're going to have string players playing your arrangement at a later state. Of course there's all these rules in orchestral arrangement and harmonization. And uh, one of them is that it's totally fine to double the root note of your chord. So maybe we can make use of that. So let's continue here and double up this, uh, the A of the A minor, an octave above here. So we have a 
more of this uh, A playing, and the same thing for our F chord. Let's double the F here, an octave. Maybe that's a little bit too high, but there's also okay to double the fifth. But uh, it's less common that you double the third, because it's already so strong in, uh, in the chord. So maybe let's double the C here instead. Which is the fifth, uh, the C is the fifth in the F chord. You have F, A and C. And in our D minor, let's double the D in octave. And in our final E major chord, we can double the, the E. So now we have a very fat arrangement here with the chords spread out and, and we have a very nice voice leading in the core of our chord progression. And we also have this really fat basses playing in the, in the bass section. It's a good practice not to make uh, closed uh, chord voicings in the low end of your tracks because uh, your songs will sound very muddy. That's why we have this really lush and wide spread between the notes in the low end. Right, so let's see how that sounds with our strings. And for the strings I am using the sign player with the Metropolis Arc 5 orchestral library. And we have the high strings large patch and the low strings large with some winds blended in. So let's move down our piano sketch to the strings, the string track. So you can hear we have instantly a very epic sound from that uh, simple chord progression. And now we can continue and add some uh, dynamic uh, expression to make this even more dynamic and wild because uh, as of now all the chords is playing in the same sustained velocity and uh, dynamic expression. But with this patch we can actually have a very low dynamic. and go to a more strong dynamic. So let's begin small and, and build. And I'm controlling the dynamic expression with the mod wheel here on this uh, key step, Arturia key step 37. And now let's open up the automation lane so we can see that mod ride I did on the dynamics expression. And now to add this uh, final spice on this piece we need to add some uh, epic choirs. And we will add that from the sign player Metropolis Arc 1 and the choirs. The Victorian female choir sustains and the Aurora male choir also the sustains patch. But let's begin with the female top line. So let's double this note clip to our uh, female choir track and uh, just get rid of all these lower notes and all these top notes. So now we get rid of all these other notes and only let the top line be featured on this uh, voice track. And now we heard that these two notes are out of range so we can just move them down an octave. Let's hear how that sounds with our uh, strings. Now it's a good practice to avoid these kind of large leaps in your melody lines. Well, you can have these kind of large leaps in your basses, but for your melody lines, violas and violins, you try to avoid these kind of leaps and have a more smooth melody line. Instead of beginning on this A up here, we can begin with uh, the fifth of the A minor, which is the, the E, and go to from E to an F because we have the F in the F major chord, and then yeah the D is of course in in the D minor, and the E is uh, the root note of our the final E chord.
And of course, you can uh, experiment here with creating your own melodies as the top line. But uh, yeah, we can keep this uh, the E, F, and A to the G sharp. Now we need to add some male choirs to fatten up that mid mid range. So we make another duplicate of this chord track, hold in Alt and drag this to our male choir track. So on this track we have the Aurora male choir from Metropolis Arc 1. So it's a really, really nice fat choir. So let's uh, enter this piano roll and get rid of those uh, really low notes and get rid of this uh, top line and only have these uh, mid chords left. And let's hear how that sounds in solo. <laughs> and that's uh, too high for the male choir, so let's uh, move that down an octave. And that's of course much nicer. And since we copied that uh, previous track, which already has this uh, dynamic uh, expression mod wheel ride, uh, the mod wheel automation, we also have the automation for this track already prepared for us. So now we can just play back this track with all these nice little choirs and strings. Right, so that's actually all there is to it. You take your small piano chord progression and lay out the notes around C4 on the piano roll. Next step is to double up the bass notes and do it in octaves and make sure you have a large spread between the notes. Because if you have close voicings in the bass area, you will have a muddy sound. Then move around the notes between the chords so you have a smoother transition between each chord part. And finally duplicate some of those notes to make a melody line on the top of the chord. And the final tip for a really bombastic sound is to add some choirs on top, so you can have a lead vocal by a female choir, and maybe add some male choirs in the core of the chord. Now I'd like to know what your secret trick is to make your music and songs more epic. Please let me know in the comments. As always, if you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Now, if you want to learn more about the DAW that I use here at Bitwig Studio, you can sign up to my Bitwig Studio Masterclass at store.morningdewmedia.com. Right, now you can continue and watch my next episode on composing and producing. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye. Wow, epic bosses.